What's up? So much to talk about, so little time to do it. Let's get into it. So we have to look at two different kinds of transport in this section, and then what we're going to look at here is air and ocean transport. That's the vast majority of IV geography teachers. They look at those things. So after this video, you can look at some of the resources and most of the IV geography teachers that produce materials. You'll be able to get some more stuff from them. All right. What are the advantages in air travel, passenger and freight? freight meaning cargo. It's actually the fastest mode of transportation as far as moving people around, moving things around. And it's safe. So people are afraid of flying, but overall flying is relatively safe. The disadvantages include that it's expensive. It can be expensive, although the prices have come down recently. Um, as far as cargo and freight, uh, we're going to find that ocean travel for moving things around the planet is much cheaper. And there's capacity issues with regards to the uh, the amount of people and things that we can put on airplanes. Whereas, again, once we look at ocean travel in the next video, um, we're going to find that the, the freight, it's seemingly unlimited. They've continued to build bigger and bigger ships. But the first thing that I want to start out with is this uh, this video, super cool video that shows air traffic worldwide for one full day. You can see in the dark areas where the, the sun is setting and, and rising as well as the light areas there. And all the, the planes that are flying from different um, airports around the world. I like this video especially because uh, it clearly shows nodes and hubs. Um, nodes are main regions and main areas where um, people will fly into and then a, a hub will be a semi-main region or a peripheral, semi-peripheral region where um, you'll have, you know, a major airport and then uh, spokes up outside of those where you get little puddle jumpers, planes flying to, smaller planes flying to less um, well-known airports. Okay, a diagram of this is also in the notes so you can see that too. Um, I just googled how many people flew in an airplane last year and it said more than 3 billion people, so we're looking at quite a few people. Changes in flight. This is another, uh, this is just a, <clears throat> a resource that talks about the, uh, the history of aviation. That'll be in the notes here as well. But I want to get into some data because the data is where the fun stuff is. Um, I've, I've plugged this before, this website, the Geography of Transport Systems. They've got some great stuff about air transport. And the next video started playing. Okay, let me pause that. Again, if we go back to the transport systems uh, website, there's a ton of data. It's You can find it actually along the right side of the screen here. And this is where I got all of the, the graphs that I'm about to talk about right now. Okay, If we look at the change in capacity and the change in, what was it? I got to go back and remember change in speed and capacity, okay? Um, we're gonna look at both of those things. This is billions of passengers and how far, far they flew in kilometers along the left side and billions of tons in terms of the freight that was um, transported. And that's how far the, the freight flew in kilometers. You'll notice that there's been an exponential increase over time, that sort of hockey, ship J, hockey stick J curve. Um, from about 1974, it took off and has been growing ever since. There's a, a slight dip here as a result of, let's see, 2008, yeah, economic crisis, the recession in the United States. So you can see it's been growing over time. Um, here we have the price. Actually, the price has declined, decreased pretty dramatically after World War II. You'll notice that it was in the thousands and thousands of dollars for a ticket. Um, this is a, a flight air round trip airfare between New York and London and now it's around $800 so it's dropped quite a bit. If we look at the capacity and the size this is something that's quite interesting in fact um, airplanes as a result of becoming more streamlined and becoming more um, eco-friendly and the the uh, gas consumption and the usage of gas um, they actually have shrunk in size in terms of overall number of passengers on each plane. So um, to increase efficiency, what they've done is they've, they've back in the pre-1985 models, they were making planes with 
you know, over 200, 300 passengers, up to 400 passengers. And now you can see that um, beyond 1985, as a result of wanting to um, save on gas and create um, better efficient planes, more fuel efficient planes, that's the word I was looking for, uh, they've actually shrunk the, the total number of passengers that can <clears throat> fly on the plane up to 200, basically. So that's pretty significant. And then <clears throat> lastly here, I, I thought this was pretty cool. This is a, a map that shows um, how long it would take to fly from London to Sydney. And the different colors represent the different routes over time. The red is 1955 and the green is 2006, which is a nonstop flight. And uh, you'll notice that it used to take two and a half days in 1955. And now it's only about 20 hours nonstop, only 20 hours nonstop from London to Sydney. I just googled this because it's cool. This is the last thing I'll talk about. The busiest airports in the world by passenger traffic. And Atlanta, Georgia, Hartsfield, Jackson, Atlanta International Airport is at the top. You can see mostly, yep, all of them developed countries. And that goes back to core periphery theory. Okay, so I hope this helps and I hope this clarifies some stuff for you. See you in the next video, Ocean Transport.